Welcome to Story Time. I am Reading Buddy. We bring you a story every week. Hope you enjoyed the first chapter of the Wonderful Wizard of Oz last week, where a cyclone picked up a small one-room farmhouse with Dorothy and her dog Toto still inside. In this episode. We are going to continue the journey with Dorothy and Toto. Let me turn to today's guest for the introduction. Hello, my name is Brandon. I am seven years old. Today we are going to read you Chapter Two, The Council with the Munchkins. This chapter is a bit long, so we will split it into two story time episodes. Oh. Don't forget to stay until the very end and learn a Chinese phrase with Reading Buddy. Ready? Let's get started. Dorothy was awakened by a shock. It was so sudden and severe that if Dorothy had not been lying on the soft bed, she might have been hurt. As it was, the shock made her catch her breath and wonder what had happened.、Uh? And Toto put his cold little nose into her face and whined dismally.、Uh. Dorothy sat up and noticed that the house was not moving, nor was it dark, for the bright sunshine came in at the window, flooding the little room. She sprang from her bed and, with Toto at her heels, ran and opened the door. The little girl gave a cry of amazement and looked about her. Her eyes growing bigger and bigger at the wonderful sights she saw. The cyclone had set the house down very gently, for a cyclone. In the midst of a country of marvelous beauty, there were lovely patches of green, grassy turf all about, with grand trees bearing rich and juicy fruit. Banks of gorgeous flowers were all around, and the birds with rare and brilliant feathers sang and fluttered in the trees and the bushes. A little way off was a small brook, rushing and sparkling along between green banks, and murmuring in a voice very grateful to the little girl who had lived so long on the dry, gray prairies. While she stood looking eagerly at the strange and beautiful sights, she noticed coming toward her. A group of the oddest people she had ever seen. They were not as big as the grown folk she had always been used to, but neither were they very small. In fact, they seemed about as tall as Dorothy, who was a well-grown child for her age. Although they were, so far as looks go. Many years older. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Three were men and one a woman, and all were oddly dressed. They wore round hats that rose to a small point a foot above their heads, with little bells around the brims that tinkled sweetly as they moved. The hats of the men were blue. The little woman's hat was white, and she wore a white gown that hung in pleats from her shoulders. Over it were sprinkled little stars that glittered in the sun like diamonds. The men were dressed in blue, of the same shade as their hats, and wore well-polished boots with a deep roll of blue at the tops. 
the men Dorothy thought were about as old as Uncle Henry, for two of them had beards. But the little woman was doubtless much older. Her face was covered with wrinkles. Her hair was nearly white, and she walked rather stiffly. When these people drew near the house, where Dorothy was standing in the doorway, they paused and whispered among themselves, as if afraid to come farther. Ring around the room. Hey, did you see that girl? Yes, who's she? But the little old woman walked up to Dorothy, made a low bow. And said in a sweet voice, "You are welcome, most noble sorceress, to the land of the Munchkins. We are so grateful to you for having killed the wicked witch of the East, and for setting our people free from bondage." Dorothy listened to this speech with wonder. What could the little woman possibly mean by calling her a sorceress and saying she had killed the wicked witch of the east? Dorothy was an innocent, harmless little girl who had been carried by a cyclone many miles from home, and she had never killed anything in all her life. But the little woman evidently expected her to answer, so Dorothy said, with hesitation, "You are very kind, but there must be some mistake. I have not killed anything. Your house did, anyway," replied the little old woman with a laugh. Ah ha 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 ha! And that is the same thing. See. She continued, pointing to the corner of the house. There are her two feet, still sticking out from under a block of wood. Dorothy looked, and gave a little cry of fright. <gasps> There, indeed, just under the corner of the great beam the house rested on, two feet were sticking out. Shod in silver shoes with pointed toes. Oh dear! Oh dear! cried Dorothy, clasping her hands together in dismay. Ah,、uh, the house must have fallen on her. Whatever shall we do? There is nothing to be done," said the little woman calmly. But who was she? Asked Dorothy. She was the wicked witch of the East, as I said. Answered the little woman. She has held all the Munchkins in bondage for many years, making them slave for her night and day. Now they are all set free, and are grateful to you for the favor. Who are the Munchkins? Inquired Dorothy. They are the people who live in this land of the East, where the wicked witch ruled. Are you a Munchkin? Asked Dorothy. No, but I am their friend. Although I live in the land of the North, when they saw the witch of the East was dead. The Munchkins sent a swift messenger to me, and I came at once. I am the Witch of the North. Oh, gracious! cried Dorothy. Are you a real witch? Yes, indeed, answered the little woman. But I am a good witch, and the people love me. I am not as powerful as the wicked witch. Was who ruled here, or I should have set the people free myself. But I thought all witches were wicked," said the girl, who was half frightened at facing a real witch.
So now the West, part one of chapter two of the Wonderful Wizard of Oz. In the story, Dorothy was afraid of the witch. In today's Chinese time, Reading Buddy is going to teach you how to say "I am afraid" in Chinese. 我好害怕，我好害怕。We will be back with the rest of Chapter Two next week. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.